Hello, brethren. I want to welcome you to today's family devotional. God bless you. As you listen, please let me kindly plead with you to subscribe to our channel, share our messages, press the like button or pass your comments as you deem fit, and press the notification button so that whenever we upload a new video, which is almost every day, you get to be notified. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be with you this morning, to come in with you, to listen to you, to guide us. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we just want to say we appreciate you for your beautiful word that you've given to us that is enlivening our lives all the time. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God Almighty, we appreciate you on behalf of everything you've made, the planet Earth and all our contents, the heavenly places and all our contents, everything which you made to please yourself and for the comfort also of us men and women in this world. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Lord, please, we come before your throne of mercy this morning concerning our iniquities. Forgive us in Jesus' name. As we go on in your world this morning, please, Daddy, enlighten us. Prepare our hearts for understanding. Uh, let us develop wisdom from what comes from your word this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the practical application of this word, let it bring us salvation. Let it bring us deliverance. Let it bring us progress in life in the mighty name of jesus at the end of the day father let us make heaven and reign with you in eternity in jesus name we pray amen, amen. praise the lord amen. brethren we're going to be taking a bible passage from the book of john chapter 4 from verse 27 we'll stop at a comfortable place god bless you as you listen and at this point his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, Why do you seek, or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way to the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I, have, I ever did. Will this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat. God bless you, man. God bless you, man. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, the kingdom of God is like a child sent to school to so that his or her tomorrow will be brighter and better, especially than his parents, that he can become somebody of substance, that they can be in a position to take good care of themselves when they are old, and that they should too should be able to. Um, take good care of their own families. However, there are a lot of distractions in life. As the child grows up, faces with temptations. And, you know, to the point that many times he or she is tempted to abandon his education. And if you abandon your education, you know that those goals will not be accomplished. And unfortunately, this happened to many, even in the contemporary world today. So they lost focus. And uh, at the end, 
they regret. But those who tarried amongst them, who, apart from not being distracted by the pain, the challenges, who bore the pains, they laughed last. Brethren, the race we are in is a race that nobody is sure of the end of it except those whom God has been given the opportunity to know what to do. The Bible even says in the book of Ecclesiastes that life is time and chance, being at the right place at the right time. And also the Bible tells us in the book of uh, Joshua 1, 8 to 10, that this book of the Lord shall not depart from you. You shall meditate upon it day and night and endeavor to do everything that is in it. And that if you do this, your ways shall prosper and you shall have good success. Let's give glory to God for the rainfall, early morning rainfall. So, I have heard the sound of the recording, but we give glory to God because we really need the rains. Amen. So, uh, brethren, let me also apologize that the light, the background light is not very bright. Uh, we are making do with improvised solar light. We give glory to God that we can even have something to use at all. So, um, brethren, like I said, the rays of life is full of confusion. That is why we need to review our lives from time to time, whether we are still getting it right. And the title of this message is Don't Lose Focus. Don't Lose Focus. There are two things that you need to focus on in this world if you don't want to live a regrettable life. Focus on God first. Matthew 6.33 that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Every other thing shall be added. Then focus again on your life. How to make your life, you know, not miserable. You need to focus on what you do to make your life worthwhile while you are still strong because by the time you are fi- you are in your 50s if you haven't hit your 50s what you'll be doing then is consolidation if you have missed it in your early years i pray for you that you will not just struggle in vain till the end of your life in the mighty name of jesus so focus on god you can see that jesus Almighty God, Jesus Christ, who came to save the world, focused on the salvation of man for the first 33 years of his life, 30 years of life, he was preparing for the kingdom of God that is is come to prepare for us here. He studied the word of God diligently. He understood it and his calling manifestation of his calling did not come until he was 30 years old and he did it for only three and a half years and yet he succeeded you are going to finish well in the mighty name of which means the period of preparation is always greater far greater than the period of achievement for instance a person also starts his life he starts his life struggles from when he was young or is young till he retires at 60 or so, or thereabouts. And by the time he's 60, he looks back. What has he achieved? Has he achieved something substantial in terms of even the comfort of life? Is he in uh, agreement with God? Is he in relationship with God? If you check your life at the age of 60, and you discover that uh, for the rest of your life, God willing, you will not suffer, you will not lack what to eat, and you will not lack whatever is needed for you to live a peaceful life. You have succeeded. If you let, check your life again, 
and you check your spiritual life and you discover that you have been in good relationship with God, the Lord God Almighty. Christ is your Lord and personal Savior. And you, your conscience is free that you have done what the Lord asks you to do. That is, your focus is to win souls for Christ. And then you just discover that God will it. You are going to make heaven. Oh, what a joyful life. That is a life that is fulfilled. But I want to tell you, there are a lot of people, they succeed in the first one. That is, they amass wealth. They don't like what they eat if they are dying. They, everything points to the fact that they are materially successful, financially excellent. But when they review their spiritual lives, they find that, you know, they are lagging behind. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. That's why we said we should not lose focus. Focus of making heaven and focus of succeeding in this world. Once you are able to and focus on making heaven comes on having a personal relationship with God all the time. Doing His will. Preaching and teaching Matthew 28, uh, 16 to the end. Preaching and teaching the word of God and winning souls for Christ. And for every soul you want, on, on, uh, your God uses it to win in this world. There's a reward for you in heaven. That's why we always urge us. You see, you may say, I can't go out. I don't have time. I do not know about this YouTube thing, like I say. Just share this message. You're already evangelizing. So that people who would have lost focus in life can be brought back to the right track. That is, to focus on making heaven and focus on, upon their lives also, doing what they should do to make their lives what it should be at the end of God has not created us to fail spiritually. He has not created us to fail you know, in, the, in the pursuit of life. So we are, not, we are supposed to be balanced. There should be a hope of heaven while we enjoy this world still. The Lord God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Mm. Then in the area of making your life better or making your life not regrettable at the end of the day, what are we supposed to do? Review your life from time to time to see whether you are doing what you should do. Gather knowledge, uh, you know, gather skills, and labor with your hands. Deuteronomy 28, so, so that, Deuteronomy 28, to 14, so that you will be blessed. Don't just say, because you are spiritual, you won't do something about your physical life. Otherwise, one, thing, one observation I made in this world is that I discovered that, yes, a lot of us are Christian, we pray, we fast, we do everything. But those whom God really blessed, prospered, are the people that look at the other side of life. That is, they looked at, they focus on their, they also focus upon how to make their life better. You understand what I mean? Those of them, they decided to go to school, it was to acquire skills, marketable skills, they decided to work to make sure they go into production or they become somebody or they work, they labor and they saved hard and they did everything. At the end of the day, by the time they are old, they are not regretting anything. Then the pursuit of life will not uh, make them to go and fake Christianity or fake spiritual life. That is what do I mean by that? They won't go and establish churches because, excuse me, they want to make money and thereby asking people to pay tithes and offerings, thinking that they will, the church will feed them. No, they would rather labor with their hands and God will bless that work. They will bless the work of God. Yeah, they will serve God even with the substance they have. They will give to God generously in terms of serving God and helping the needy and the people around them, starting with their families and their children, and their larger families, and even their communities to the best of their abilities. So please, brethren, don't, uh, like Yoruba will say, uh, birds don't fly with one wing. Life has two wings. Your spiritual life, which is heaven-focused, your, uh, uh, your physical life, which is limited to this world, to succeed in this world, and to make heaven. Those are the two things that you should focus on. 
Don't lose focus. Jesus knew that after preparing for 30 years and he ended well, he never lost focus of the fact that he was to be the Messiah. And the moment he grasped that, he did it for three and a half years yet, he, he succeeded. I pray for you. Jesus succeeded in this world. Jesus never lacked anything good, even physically, materially, financially. You know, there is a treasury. And he didn't beg for money. He didn't say people should come and pay offering and do all donations or pay tithes. No, 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 no. Jesus was self-sufficient because God himself was providing for the things. But he has already labored for 30 years. And with that, you know, it was in a, um, a better stead. And then by the time he went into the ministry, in fact, God proposed that ministry. I pray for you. Please, you will not lose your focus in the mighty name of Jesus. You will make heaven, and then at the same time in this world, you will not suffer in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. I pray for my brethren and myself today that these two goals, please, no matter what the distractions we have, don't allow Satan to redirect or shift our focus from making heaven and succeeded in this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Whatever we needed to do to accomplish the spiritual goal and, and whatever we need to do to accomplish our physical goals that will make our lives meaningful and worth living, please, Lord, let us do them in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I also pray. Your know, word says, life is life, time and chance. Being at the right place at the right time. Father, I pray, Lord God Almighty, let us always be at the right time, uh, and, you know, at, the, at the right place at the right time, in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in matters of making life meaningful, successful, you know, let it be so in Jesus' name. In matter of making heaven, please, let it be so also, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please be focused. Be heaven focused and be focused on pursuing your life's pursuit so that you will not have to depend or beg for bread. You don't depend on people, especially when you are old, you may not be you will not be having the uh, agility, whatever, to be able to, you know, fend for yourself and for yourself. And whatever you have done when you are still strong, I pray you will not regret your life. Whatever you have done while you are still strong is what we still stay with. Stay with. You remember that uh, example I gave? I said, I have studied this word. It's those people who, so who, those who succeeded in the war are those people who had focus and took life seriously by preparing well for life. And then, of course, those who will make heaven, they are the people that will, you know, not toy with the kingdom matter, even while they were still strong. Because a time is coming, just like Ecclesiastes 12 told us. A time is coming that we will not have the opportunity of running around and of saying we want to do one thing again because our strength will fail us. You will not regret your life. I will not regret mine. In the mighty name of Jesus. See you tomorrow. God bless you.